well. So I want to thank all the took part in the, uh, in the on the interview committees, and we appreciate it. So as, as you know, the principal's position is is one of our most important ones. So uh, we wanted to make sure that we were able to get the right people in place and to move things forward for for the kids of Brockton. So we welcome you. We thank you for coming tonight. Um, we really appreciate you having you here. So thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, everyone. Um, you'll find that. Um, Brockton, some people say, oh, this is a big city, but Brockton's really just a, um, a big town, and um, um, Principal Hart already knows this, but um, it's always been a um, city of immigrants. It's just a matter of where they're coming from at any particular time. So um, we're very um, unique, and we're very welcoming of basically everyone. You'll, you'll be exposed to all sorts of different... Um, Ethnicities. I mean, in Boston, certainly um, you are exposed to some, but you know you're going to be surprised at where some of our students come from. I think it'll even open your eyes. Um, so we're very um, we're a very demanding community in terms of expecting excellence from our schools, expecting excellence from our principals, our school committee, our superintendent. Uh, people are always watching. Parents care about the quality of education their child receives. Um, and our role is really to support you and the teachers, um, and, and we try to do that. Unfortunately, we've had some very tough budgets, but we've always been a school committee that wants to put our children first, make sure that they have the extra opportunities to keep them engaged. Um, you know, as Principal Hart knows, you know, there, there are times that we've had to make some very tough decisions, but <clears throat> and some people have said, well, you should wipe out all the extracurricular things. And we say, absolutely not, because these are the things that keep our students engaged. We want them to stay in our schools. We want them to be in our schools after the school day ends because we want them participating in quality, safe activities that, you know, grip the mind, that interest the student, that open the eyes and, and, and put them in a career direction of, you know, something that they're going to enjoy and, and for their future because we have students that graduate here uh, and go to the finest you know colleges and universities um, and we're very proud the community is very proud of that fact um, so welcome aboard we, we we look really forward to working with all of you um, East Middle School is our junior high school so <laughs> we'll be watching <laughs> I'm just kidding but uh, no welcome aboard we, we really are happy to have all of you um, you'll find I think the experience here in Brockton a wonderful one we have teachers that make careers of Brockton and, and and just like principal Hart said she wants to finish her career here and I would say the ma vast majority of our staff are here for a very long time because it is a very unique place. And it, it's a very challenging district in terms of um, the needs that our children need, but you'll be amazed at uh, the abilities that these students have coming from all sorts of families, all sorts of obstacles, and um, you know, we basically support all of them. That's our goal, and, and basically to... Um, take that piece of coal and make it a diamond so that they are successful in years to come and they come back we want them to come back to Brockton and we want them to be proud of the city they came from and be able to say to the world hey I went to Brockton High School and you know look at uh, you know I'm a biochem major working for one of the biggest companies out there um, you know we just Michael was just invited superintendent um, Thomas invited to one of the biggest law firms in the, in, in, in the state of Massachusetts, and the lead attorney is a Brockton High uh, partner in charge, a Brockton High grad. Um, you know, Kenneth Feinberg, the attorney with, um, you know, 9-11 and all of the, you know, the um, horrible things that happened, you know, um, he's, he's a Brockton guy. I mean, we've got some pretty famous alum, and, we, um, and we're very proud of, of where we come from, and we're proud to have you on board. So. Welcome aboard, and you'll, I think you'll find this experience unique and pleasurable. Thank you. And Good tough, to be here. and a challenge, too. So thank thanks. You. Really, really proud to have you guys with us. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh. I just want to welcome you guys. Um, we're, it's a pleasure to have you. Welcome aboard. And um, many of us actually go to the different schools, so you'll be seeing us. And um, we're all here. We're, we're all here to work with you. So. I might not be assigned to the East or um, to the Raymond, but 
those are our surrounding schools and, and you'll see a lot of us um, at the events and, and we're actually there so if you need anything just reach out to us Thank all right you. so Thank welcome you. aboard thank, thank you thank you all right good luck first day is around the corner <laughs> it's coming quick <laughs> vacation's over <laughs> where'd the summer go Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Thank it. You. Pleasure. So next, I want to um, bring down our partnership with the YMCA for the um, Summer's Leader, Leaders Program. So I'll have Matt, Tiffany, and uh, Alexis come down. Um, this past Thursday night, I attended, attended the award ceremony for the Summer Leaders Program, um, which is a great partnership between the Brockton Public Schools and the YMCA. Um, I'll have... Um, these three fine people explain um, the program to you and, uh, and what happens in the summer. Um, this was set up through the community schools office, um, also with Heather Arigi. Uh, did a, she couldn't be with us tonight, but she did a great job setting this up. And this has gone on for eight years. Um, so I, don't I want to welcome uh, Matt Gurley. I want to welcome your Alexis Rosario, and who also is a member of uh, Empower Yourself. Um, she and I had dinner together down at the Seacrest um, with a bunch of other students in Cedric. Uh, the Seacrest hosted Cedric and our students um, and uh, gave them rooms for the night because they had a competition in uh, Martha's Vineyard the following day. So um, Cedric and I made a connection to the Seacrest and they provided 10 rooms for our students and chaperones to stay. So it's separate from this program, but I just wanted to say how, how amazing Alexis is because it seems like she does everything. So in Tiffany Smith. Smythe. Smythe, I'm sorry. And uh, Tiffany is the assistant director, Matt is the director, and Alexis is a student in the program. So I'll let them explain to you the, the program and how the summer went. So we thank you for coming tonight. Alexis is going to uh, read uh, her speech that she gave graduation night, and then we can uh, fill in any, uh, any questions that you might have. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hello. My name is Alexis Rosario. I'm 14, year old, 14 years old, and I've completed the Summer Leader Program this year with the YMCA. Now, if you're going to take anything away from this speech today, I'd like you to take this. This amazing program has taught me a lot of self-discipline, bravery, and patience. A lot, a lot of patience. And let's elaborate. I still remember the first day of camp. I was confused, a little intimidated, and worried. I was scared that the kids wouldn't like me or wouldn't listen to me. I hated waking up so early because it was supposed to be my summer break. But now that it's all over, I realize that all the things I mentioned beforehand had nothing to do with the bigger picture. It wasn't enjoyable to wake up so early for work, but the experience itself was so much fun. I met so many people who I would have never met otherwise. I learned life lessons that will stay with me until I die. I've learned you're not always going to like who you work with. You're not always going to be in the most ideal situations. But I learned that you either work with it or work around it. Nothing should ever make you feel like giving up. There was one time at camp when a little girl in my group who was known for having accidents asked if I could take her to the bathroom. At first I told her to go get a buddy and come back to me. She grabbed a friend and we all head towards the bathroom. About halfway there, she stops dead in her tracks and says, I can't do it. And I'm like, wait, hold on. It's right there. Come on, we can do it. And she starts shaking her head. She's on the verge of tears. She's ready to cry. And I'm like, well, we got to go. So I'm like now pushing her. I'm guiding her along the way. Other counselors across the, can um, across the camp are like cheering me on. They're all involved now. And in the end, we made it. <laughs> she did her thing, and we went back to our group. On the way back, I turned to her and said, remember when you said you couldn't do it? Well, look at you now. You did it even when you couldn't believe you could. I gave her a high five and we told her never not to believe in herself and that she could do anything if she believed she could. In that moment, I realized that everyone must depend on others and at that age, you definitely need people to trust in you and believe in us. It's one thing to believe in yourself, but it's another to have someone believe in you. When you have that in life, you feel invincible. The whole point of the story isn't to brag that I got the accident girl to the bathroom. It's more to honor the people who have believed in me, even when I didn't. Of course, my mother has always been with me since day one, but I've also had wonderful people behind me that I've gathered along the way. Throughout this entire program, Matt and Tiffany have done that. They encouraged us and believed in us at times I'm sure we did not. If realizing your worth was the goal of this program, then I think it achieved it and more. It's perfect. So for anyone thinking about the Summer Leader Program or just trying it new, a new thing in life, here's my advice. Try it, meet new people, and enjoy every moment of it. Thank you. Um, 
Matt, can you describe to um, the committee just you know the, yeah. the a brief overview view of the um, the summer program? Yeah, the basis of the programs we um, we take incoming freshmen um, from Brockton Public Schools. So um, at first we started it was just east and north for the first couple of years, and now we I think we've served every middle school since then now, um, and we get them into camp uh, as counselors. They're counselors in training. They attend two days a week. Um, and then on Fridays, they meet with us for about three hours and we do uh, character development skills with them um, on the side. So uh, during camp, they train as counselors. Um, they're expected to be role models for the, the younger kids. And it's a leadership uh, model is uh, how Heather Irvigy got it to us. And we use job readiness as kind of that vehicle to kind of drive that. and. Obviously, the partnership with the YMCA camp is one of our um, biggest benefits. So we take the incoming um, freshmen, assign them a job, 13, 14 years old. So we try to get them relevant skills that they can take when they do turn age of employment at 16 and that they're a little bit better off. But also, we're trying to uh, get them the skills they need to succeed in high school as well, which is the original idea of the grant. It was to secure and support that transition from eighth grade to uh, yeah, eighth grade to ninth grade, um, which we have studies that can be the most difficult for students. So it was designed to do that. It's definitely grown in the last eight years. Um, and we average about 25 to 30 leaders every year uh, through the program. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, would you like to add anything to? I had an amazing year. It was my first year doing the Summer Leaders Program, and um, Alexis and everyone else made it extremely easy for me. Um, these were an awesome group of students, and I'm honored that I was a part of this program. Anyone? Mr. Sullivan. Just one. Where was the camp? Is it in Brockton? No, we do not uh, do Camp Essoy. We go to Camp Humicus, which is kind of our traditional camp. That's what uh, we use that. And then um, we go to Camp Setucket, mostly based off of needs for the Y and also easy transportation for the leaders to get there with the bus systems. How many kids are involved? Uh, so this year we graduated 20, 24. 24. Yes. Um, and it was about an even split. I think it was 13 and 11 between the camps. Um, but in years past, we... We're right around the 30 mark. I think the most we've done is 35, and that was the first couple of years. Um, and we try to split them. So ideally, it's 20 and 20. We would love 20 kids at each camp. Um, and we do have a, I'm going to call it a pilot program, but they're in their third year now in Plymouth, um, working with Plymouth Public Schools. And they go to Camp Clark, which is located in Plymouth. So we've already kind of branched out. Um, and we're just conversations about getting into other camps as well. You know? Nice job. Thank you. Mr. Gormley. Uh, congratulations on what sounds like an awesome summer. Uh, great job. You did an amazing job speaking. Uh, I teach eighth graders, and I don't have any eighth graders <laughs> that speak as well as you. Uh, <laughs> maybe close, but that was great. Um, and I know Matt has worked for the Y for over 10 years at least, right? Oh, man. 16, Some form or 16, another. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and Matt was my boss at one point. <laughs> So he's, he's a great guy. He, he was always somebody that was very great and calm and, and a shirt reassuring to a lot of the kids. So um, I see you nodding your head so you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Um, <laughs> so it's great to have you still involved. I know you, you're teaching in Plymouth now, but um, I'm, I'm glad to see you still get a finger on the pulse of what's going on with the youth in Brockton. So I commend you, sir. Mr. Bath. Yeah, Matt, you mentioned that um, <clears throat> you work with eighth graders going into the ninth grade. What kind of structure do you have with that? Because I think that's an important thing because I think there is a big misconnect sometimes when eighth graders move 
with, with, without any sort of guidance from the eighth grade into the high school. I mean, it's a culture shock. Yep. You know, it's much like high school seniors when they come to freshman year in college. Again, it's culture shock. So what kind of things do you do with that? Because I'm very interested in that eighth grade movement up to the ninth grade. We've definitely evolved. Like I said, it was uh, mostly leadership development. Um, but over the past few years, we work with the Y of the USA. We have a, what we call the CDLI model. It's a character development model. Mm -hmm. um, and it definitely feeds that social emotional piece uh, for the kids to transition. So we, that's what we do on the Fridays when they come in and meet. Uh, so we do three hour workshops and uh, you know, emotion management, empathy, uh, self-esteem, interpersonal relationships. Uh, we hit that all. And then on, on the side of it, you know, besides the social and emotional, we do hover around the academics too. So um, we use Odysseyware just online um, and it is created by uh, middle school teachers as just kind of a review for, for the leaders to go through. Mm -hmm. So we do require them to kind of engage in studies as well. Um, so when they enter in September, um, they know what the social environment's gonna be like. They can be prepared for that. Um, hopefully we did some good work with emotional management. So the first time they run into adversity, you know, we, we gave them some support for that. Um, and then academically, that's not just, they didn't just take the whole summer off at all. Right. Um, and then we also provide support for them throughout the, uh, the school year too. So the, you know, program ended last week, but you know, we're here right now. Um, <laughs> Tiffany remains in the office full, uh, full time. And along with the other, a lot of people, we invite the leaders. It's an open door policy. Um, they want to come down. We have uh, many staff that will just sit and tutor them if they need it, or help with homework, or just someone to talk to, or frankly, just come and hang out in the air conditioning if they if they want. You know, after a long walk from Brockton High. Um, so it's kind of we we structure it very very uh, uh, like it's a it's an eight week sprint during the summer. Mm -hmm. um, but then we try to open that up to them for the next four, eight years. Um, we have leaders that were part of the original cohort um, who are already graduated college now, and we still have a connection with them um, through either being a reference for them for their career or just guiding them or just them calling us and say, hey, guess what happened, you know, um, and sharing success with them. What's the biggest obstacle you face? Is it, is it the apprehension of the kids from moving from eighth to ninth? Are they a little afraid of the moving up there? And, and is that what you kind of focus on uh, as well? Because um, academics, yeah, we, I, I think academics will come once the fear is negated. Yeah. Okay, because I think it's not the academics they're afraid of. Yeah. I think it's the social interaction and movement into Absolutely. the ninth grade. I, I would say so. I mean, I, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny. We always joke of it, um, but every year I have the conversation of one-way hallways because um, I went to Brockton High as well, so I kind of like know, like, in, you know, the different buildings and the colors and, sure. you know, Tiffany. Yeah, it's providing them with the posse. Like, they yeah. have people that they know when they go down these hallways. And believe it or not, when you don't know anyone, you can't recognize a face, it's, it's really hard to go to class and it's really hard to engage. And now these students have someone that they know. And I know students have come up to me and said, I'm really afraid to go. And I'm like, but you're not alone. And now mm -hmm. you have someone mm -hmm. sitting next to you that you can see in your classroom, a buddy on your way to the hallway, like Matt said. Right. And we, we have many testimonials that will uh, speak to that as well, that um, besides every other piece of the program, kids would tell you that they came and they wanted to come and they were successful just because they showed up that first day at Brockton High mm -hmm. and saw A, B, and C, whereas eight weeks ago they never even knew that person, and now that's part of their support system. Yeah, Brockton High School is like a city unto itself. Yeah. yeah. It really is. So, and that's so, what we try to prepare them yeah. for. You know, like, the, like you said, I think the academics, they kind of just roll and they kind of figure it out, but that transition and, um, you know, to get them kind of grounded is, you know, more of our focus, definitely. Well, I think you do a good job. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I think just real quick, I know uh, we were listening to you speak about like the need for programs in Brockton and the stuff that goes on. And the, this is this is us. Like that's that's what we're here for. That's the that's the goal. That's the mission to provide that. And when this grant came across um, Aaron Spaulding's desk eight years ago, that was kind of the like we need to identify the age group, the the people. You know, what do they need? Um, to make Brockton a, 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 a community in itself and really empowering the youth to kind of be the leaders of that. And that's what, um, 
that's what to me makes uh, a great school system as opposed to a good school system, meaning that there are people like yourself and other teachers and counselors in the buildings that see these a potential for opportunity for our students and take that extra step to apply for a grant or you know suggest that they apply and get the support of whomever needs to provide the the the, the, the go-ahead and I mean the, our students are a perfect example of the benefits that these programs have because you guys are great and um, you know continue on with uh, whatever you're doing it's working so uh, question what do you two um, uh, want to do do you have any ideas in terms of the future you know career paths well I want to get a major in engineering mechanical engineering and then maybe a minor in business so somewhere around there how about you Tiffany oh I go to school at Bridgewater State University and I'm studying sociology and I have a minor in social welfare Oh, okay so no one wants to go into teaching <laughs> <laughs> see we try to we have four years to work on yeah we, we try to get our students <laughs> to want to get into teaching <laughs> but I, I can tell you right now we have uh, some in college right now that are going for their uh, teaching Good. Um, that's like, great for, for a teaching career yeah that's wonderful yeah. well thank you for speaking this evening ah Mr. Bath can I just say one more thing I think uh, what you're doing is has far reaching uh, percussions for this repercut not repercussions but far-reaching uh, uh, what's the word am I looking for uh, benefits because in four years time at the high school they have to go through the same thing but with the foundation that you've set down for these young men and women that transition into the freshman year in college becomes less uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Less uh, volatile or less, in, uh, you, you know. So and and so you need to keep what you're doing because that's really because it is a foundation for going forward. Yes. Really I can tell is. you in full disclosure. Year one, one of our goals was to uh, reduce kind of the dropout rate. That was something we identified and blew that out of the water. So it's not even a conversation anymore. And now it's more geared toward continuing education. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we want to thank. Um, Thank you. We want to thank uh, Vinnie Matarano at the Y, Aaron Smalding, and also um, and on our side, Heather Origi for really working hard um, with yeah, Matthew, Alexis, the whole and thing. Tiffany, just to, and, and a lot of other staff that they had work. So we want to thank you all for providing the students such a great opportunity this summer. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So um, a couple final things from me. Um, the uh, just getting ready for back to school. Um, we just want to let you know that obviously school starts. Uh, teachers report on September 3rd, Tuesday, September 3rd. The first day for students um, in grades 1 through 12 is uh, Wednesday, September 4th. And then the first day for pre-K in kindergarten is Monday, September 16th. So. Uh, if you haven't registered your students for school yet, uh, Brockton residents, please make sure you get to uh, the Parent Re uh, and Information and Registration Center. The hours are on our website. Also, we want to let you know that the bus routes will be in this Thursday's paper, and they also will be posted on our website. So very important things for, for parents to know, um, especially about the bus routes, because... Um, you know, bus routes, um, we're running the same bus routes we did last year. We had to just alter a couple of spots for safety and security reasons, but all the bus routes will be posted uh, and the times to be at the bus stops will be all uh, posted on our website, but also be in the newspaper in a large back section of the newspaper. Usually the local section runs the whole back. It has all the bus routes, and that's the one I use all the time. It's the easiest to read. So, um, so we just want everybody to get back ready for school. Um, budget update, Aldo's not with us. We're pretty much in the same boat where we were the last time we had a meeting. We are still waiting on the state to disperse the pothole funds. Um, Aldo called them again today. Uh, they're not ready to do that yet. He is pushing them saying, well, you know, a lot of districts across the state start next week. Um, you know, we're fortunate that we start after Labor Day. Um, but it would be nice for them to release the funds so we can finalize some things. But at this time, we do not have the additional pothole funds. So as soon as we do get those funds, we'll 
we'll, we'll have a meeting and get moving on, uh, on that as well. So um, that actually wraps up my report. Thank you, Mr. Minichello. Not a problem. Any other questions or no? Okay. Uh, items to refer to the subcommittee. Does anyone have anything right now? No? Okay. Uh, unfinished business? No? Okay. Uh, new business? Okay. I have one item on new business. Ms. Azak had her hand up first. Oh, I so we're going to go with. Sorry. We're going to go with Ms. Azak. I just wanted to um, take a moment to, again, uh, thank Cradles to Crayon. Um, I was, uh, we, we had a little group uh, actually join us in Boston. We had uh, Mr. Thomas with us, Mr. Sullivan, uh, Ward 6 Counselor Jack Lally, myself, and some family members. So it was kind of nice to see it firsthand how they actually got the backpacks together. Oh, and Michelle Bolton. Yep. Don't want to Michelle forget Michelle. Too, yeah. uh, getting some pictures and video. So it was nice to see it firsthand. Usually we just go to Brighton, pick up the backpacks, and we come back to um, facilities and go through them. So I have to admit, Mr. Sullivan, uh, <laughs> I owe you one. Mr. Sullivan and, uh, was, was pretty much uh, back in the bags. Um, so you did a wonderful job. I appreciate all your hard work that day. I, I you know, Superintendent, um, we all pitched I broke in. I a sweat. Yeah, I know you did. It was in the <laughs> Reggie Lewis did. Center, and it was it was there was a lot about a thousand people in there. Right? There was a thousand yeah, people. Was, um, pretty, and then the, you have an assembly line putting the backpacks together. And me and Mr. Sullivan were at the end of the line, and the worst yeah, job there. Yeah, he, yeah, Mr. <laughs> Sullivan did have the did have the hardest job there. Yeah. It was nice because they they actually recognized uh, Brockton Public School, so they they had me, um, you know, uh, I had a little bit of a speech. So it was nice that they recognized us. And um, so we have our backpacks. Uh, they f the, the backpacks are distributed to our schools first. Um, we've had a lot of organizations reach out to us. We've had families reach out to us. So once I know um, that my schools have gotten their backpacks, anything that's left over, we're, we're slowly you know, getting them out to the different organizations. So, but again, Cradles to Crayons just outdid themselves. So we're fortunate to have that partnership. Yeah, and so, Joyce and gave an excellent speech, I want to say. She didn't, really didn't know. She did, she did an excellent job representing the Brockton Public Schools, the Brockton School Committee, the City of Brockton. She was on the Jumbotron when she was giving her speech, and it was, um, that was actually really good. So you did an excellent job. Thank you. Really you. Did. Thank you. That was, that was a first for me, so I was a little nervous. But, um, and we had some very impressive um, partners that were there. Yeah. So it, it's great networking yeah, for Every us. big corporation you can think of in Massachusetts had a team there putting backpacks together. Every, if you, I don't want to name them, but everyone you can think of had. Very impressive, very, very impressive. impressive. And Comcast we were able and TJX, Max, and it just was a ton. It was just, there were a lot of corporations. It was impressive. No, definitely. Um, so next year, Mr. Thomas, um, we're, we're going to have T-shirts, and we're going to have our own We're going to wear shorts and T-shirts. We, we, we were overdressed for the occasion, and uh, <laughs> we should have been in sneakers, shorts, and, and, and T-shirts, but next year we'll know better. Next year. So we will, we'll definitely have um, a table for next year. So, um, But thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I just wanted to read an email. This came from uh, Superintendent Mike Thomas. He wanted me to read it off. The letter came from Janet Trask. I'm sure everybody here knows Janet, the picture taker. She's a member of the DW Field Park Association, and the letter reads, uh, to the superintendent, Michael P. Thomas, from the DW Field Park Association, Summer Family Night, August 16, 2019. Dear friends of the DW Field Park, thanks to everyone who helped make our movie, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, in the park, such a great success. And she also sent along 10 or 12 photos. The members of the so association worked very hard to make this the third movie night by the gazebo happen. We appreciate all the generous sponsors and their support also. We are grateful for the Brockton School System support and promotion of our movie too. It was a beautiful evening. The Brockton families were treated to a special night in the lovely Brockton Park. The families and friends and children were polite and respectful of the park and helped with the cleanup. The kids were very full of popcorn when they all went home, and we continued popping right through the movie, the whole movie, and I think everybody left with a smile. 
and just wanted to say thank you to all. And the whole night went off without incident, and thanks to Busy Bee Jumpers, who supplied the uh, movie screen and project. It was a real good night, real good turnout. We had about 350 to 400 people there. It went well. Great. Yep, and Mr. Sullivan represents us and does a great job volunteering and making sure we send the call out to family, so we want to thank him for his help with this. It worked out great. Yep. Really well. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone I have else? A couple of things. If so I just want to mention, um, Mr. Minicello said this earlier, but I want to thank um, the CEO of the Nixon Peabody um, Law Firm, which is one of the biggest in Boston, to allow eight of our students to do an internship. Uh, he, his assistant contacted Dr. Murray uh, back in May. Um, Mr. Andrew Glitchner is the CEO of Nixon Peabody, a 1976 graduate of Brockton High School. Um, so his assistant uh, contacted Dr. Murray and we got together and uh, we put this together pretty quickly and the kids had an amazing experience. So they invited me last um, Tuesday to go see the presentations. Um, they worked with over 20 attorneys in the law firm and all the different uh, um, areas of law that they covered. Um, we had a meeting in the uh, 35th floor on State Street uh, in their conference room overlooking the airport the Boston Harbor and it was quite impressive and the kids were great um, and it was so great to see Mr. Glitchin it was so um, it was so important for him to give back to the Brockton kids he's very proud graduate of Brockton High School keeps his Brockton High School um, mug on his desk um, so he was just thrilled to give back to the students he makes and requires his attorneys all of them to give uh, 60 hours a year pro bono work for um, people in need uh, people that are um, be, uh, being thrown out of housing and people that are struggling uh, with immigration issues and people, many law issues that people um, that don't have the resources can't cover and protect themselves. And he actually provides pro bono work and requires 60 hours a year of his attorneys to do that for the community. So he's really big on giving back to the community and this is, was his way to give back to his hometown. He grew up poor. Um, he got evicted from his home in Brockton, so he and his parents were homeless. Um, and, you know, he worked his way up, um, went to BC Law School, and is where he is today, um, obviously very successful, and, um, but never forgot where he came from. So I really want to thank him for this opportunity for our Brockton kids. It was, it was great. Um, I want to thank um, also, I mentioned earlier, um, Empower Yourself. Um, a gentleman named Clark Gwynn is the uh, CEO of the Seacrest uh, Beach Hotel. Um, I got to know Clark um, 10 years ago when I stayed there and I had my wife, I took her there for her 40th birthday and um, I had an issue with my room. So I met the new general manager and happened to be Clark Gwynn who, who grew up poor in South Carolina and, and just came from um, Marriott to take over the Seacrest. And, um, you know, he, I got to know him and just, so he's, the Seacrest just sold last year to Delaware North, so uh, Clark made a, a substantial profit. So he wants to give back, and he, uh, we always talk about Brockton. Um, so I introduced him to Cedric. Cedric and I drove down a couple weeks ago and had lunch. So Cedric Turner and Clark made a connection. So now um, Clark is going to support and power yourself. He already did that. As I told you, they, w they went to Martha's Vineyard last Monday. So last Sunday, he provided 10 free rooms for the students and the chaperones to stay. Uh, Clark provided them dinner that night, lunch, uh, breakfast the next morning. I know they had to be out by 6 a.m. to get the, the ferry over to Martha's Vineyard, but um, and he, what he did was just fantastic. So in, And he's going to do more. He's going to provide internships for students looking to go into the hospitality business. Uh, so he and Clark now have a re I mean, Clark and Cedric have a relationship that will help really help the Empower Yourself program. So I want to thank Clark and the Seacrest for offering that. And my final uh, announcement is um, on behalf of Brockton High. Um, Dr. Murray and Brockton High School are doing a can drive at the first Friday night football game, which is September 6th. Uh, obviously, a can drive for um, families in need. So if you can come to the Brockton High Friday night, uh, September 6th um, football game, please bring some canned goods to donate. Anything else that I missed, Dr. Yeah, Murray? The Charity Guild is working with us. The Charity Guild is working with us. 
the same people that worked with us last year. Um, our facilities department works to make sure that we get everything boxed up and in the trucks and delivered. So it worked out really well last year, and we hope to have even a bigger turnout this year. So first home game, Brockton High, Septem Friday, September 6th. So we thank Dr. Murray and Brockton High for doing that with the Charity Guild. And Mr. Minichel, that is it for me on the new business. Great. Okay. Um, so uh, more opportunity for our Brockton students. I uh, spoke at uh, the last meeting and said that um, I was invited down to uh, Annapolis to the Naval Academy um, to attend a session uh, in order to have the Naval Academy reach out to communities uh, such as Brockton. They really are interested in our population, in our student body. Um, they basically had people come in from all over the country. Um, I met people from Alaska and California, uh, down south, several states, the Midwest. Um, they're really looking for someone from Nebraska because no one from Nebraska has come to the academy in, I guess, 10 years. So they really want a Nebraska person. But um, they really do like Brockton. They, they, they know of our high school. And um, um, they're looking for uh, the students that apply and are successful at, at, at any of the academies have to have excellent academic skills, excellent athleticism, um, and leadership skills. They, they need that combination. If you're the number one student here and you are not athletic, you are not going to succeed either at the Naval Academy you know, or, the, um, or West Point or the Air Force Academy or the Coast Guard Academy. You have to be able to do the physical endurance that is necessary to get through the programs. Um, the Naval Academy um, uh, boasts when we were down there that they have the best toys to play with in terms of technology and all sorts of fun things for their students. Um, uh, they, they believe that the Naval Academy basically has, is, is the best in terms of future technology and STEM opportunities for students. Um, they really are looking for uh, mathematically science-minded um, students as well as students that are, would, will pursue Chinese as a major. And as we all know, Brockton has students that pursue Chinese. Um, so the refreshing um, information is that um, they have a, a, a focus on certainly uh, communities like ours, but the Naval Academy is two-thirds male, one-third female, and they want more females all the time. Um, uh, we got to speak to some of the students, and um, the females uh, were saying, a lot of the females' um, guests were you know, really speaking to the female cadets and wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, how do they feel, how are they treated, um, you know, are they given, you know, due respect and um, all of the cadets were basically saying, we go through a program here, and uh, any uh, issues are dealt with swiftly uh, and severely if someone down there is going to be disrespectful to a, a female. And um, the um, admiral in charge basically came to speak to us as well. And um, a, a parent and or a, a, an educator that came from another community asked the same thing to him. And he, his answer was basically the same thing. I have daughters. If there is an issue here, it's dealt with swiftly and severely. You, 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 there is no nonsense here. Um, they claim that their statistics are much better than any um, college or university in the country in terms of any types of issues. You know, they're not going to say that something never occurs, but they say that we are far below your average college or university throughout this country. Your, your, your daughter is safer here than out there, so to speak. Um, but uh, they, they, really, uh, they really want, when you get into the Naval Academy, they want you to succeed. They go out of their way to make sure that you don't drop out. Um, <clears throat> they are over 90 some odd percent success uh, rate for graduation um, because basically, you can't transfer in into your sophomore or junior or senior year into any of the academies. You have to start from day one. So they bring in about 1,300 and change in terms of students. And if, you know, if, if a bunch of students drop out of that class, 
you know, no one's being added, you know, sophomore, junior year. You start, you start with the group you start with and you finish with the group you finish with. So they are very particular in terms of who they, they bring in. Um, but you don't have to be number one to ten in the class. You could be number 20, a great leader, a great athlete, uh, athlete or, you know, someone physically fit, very strong, doesn't have to be on a team, but, but shows leadership and good in academics, and, and they want you. You know, I always, and people were under the preconceived notion that you have to be one through five, one through five, one through 10 in your class. No, they'll take number 25 if you are, have that combination of leadership, academics, um, athleticism, um, and they also, I, no one knew, but they have a prep school. So if they find that you have the ability or they see something they really like, down in Newport, Rhode Island, there is a Naval <clears throat> Academy prep school that they will put you in for a year to get you up to speed in terms of where they want you to be academically. Um, and we heard from several cadets that 20 some odd percent, not 25, a little under 25 percent have gone through the prep school program um, and are very successful. Um, it really is a fantastic place. Um, um, I, I, I can't say enough about it. Um, they, they basically value uh, an education there at, at close to uh, between seventy-five and $100,000 a year in terms of what you're exposed to, what you're provided for. Um, um, and um, when I asked the cadets, you know, do you love it? Do you really, do you love your experience here? None of them say yes. They all say it's a challenge, it's a grind, but we know at the end of four years, we're going to have a great life and a great uh, future. No one there loves getting up at 5.30 in the morning, going out to do calisthenics and marching around and doing you know, what uh, a student at the Naval or any of the military academies has to do. It, it's not like, you know, it's not, you know, a, you know get up at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning, go to, you know, grab something to eat, go to your class, come back, relax. No, it's a very stringent, grind routine daily, especially that first year, that freshman year, they call it, I guess, plebe summer, that they have to really go through the process of getting um, <clears throat> trained, uh, indoctrinated into the military way of life. But you graduate from the Naval Academy making a minimum of $85,000 a year gra uh, guaranteed. And if you're a lucky submariner or go on a submarine, you get more money because it's tough duty, as they say. You know, you're under, you could be under the water for you know, three to four months. Um, but, you know, if you're a STEM student, I don't think there's a better place. I mean, you know, the, the majors they have, what they put these kids through in terms of equipment and exposure uh, is incredible. The athleticism is incredible. I saw some of the, you know, the um, uh, phys ed uh, buildings and the pool is out of control there. They have, they have uh, platforms higher than aircraft carriers and you have to jump off safely because if a carrier is going down, you have to, you know, get in the water and then you have to, within a half an hour, swim close to a mile in full clothes so that if the ship's going down, you're not going to get sucked in with that ship. So it is physically challenging. Um, but the, the, the men and women are um, so committed. Um, these, just, these kids are just, like our student here, just so bright, so articulate, so well-mannered. Um, and um, you know, the future is really bright for these students, um, you know, male and female. Um, you know, the other thing about what the Academy uh, boasts about is when you decide that your time is up, that you want out of the military. You know, big companies hire all these, these students because of A, the discipline, the leadership, the majors. Um, you know, these are very bright people doing very uh, technical and uh, important, uh, important professions. Um, so, you know, that's why the cadets say that, you know, we do it because we know the future is bright for us. You know, when we get out of this, it's going to be well worth it, you know, down, down the road. Um, I, I can't speak enough about it. So I, I'm going to um, 
uh, speak to, obviously to Dr. Murray and Superintendent Thomas and uh, you know, our ROTC uh, people. We, we need to basically every year you know, identify um, and um, show our, you know, present to our students the opportunities. They want to come here to Brockton. They want to present a STEM course uh, not only at the high school level but at the, at the middle school level. They want our kids to know early on that what's out there, what the academy has to offer so that they are not scrambling at the end of a high school career. They want these kids to be able to, you know, build with this as a goal, go through the whole, you know, high school, middle school process and have this as perhaps as a goal um, and, and, and as a long-term possibility. Um, yeah, they, it, it really is incredible. Um, you know, their pool, oh my God, it's like a double Olympic size pool and then they have side areas with, that are you know, deep enough that you know, you're jumping off these platforms and you're not hitting the bottom. Um, um, and then the Hall of Fame, you know, there's Roger Staubach and some of the names that we all know from years past of you know, graduate, Naval Academy graduates and um, just impressive grounds and uh, you know, just impressive people um, and all committed and, and what really is refreshing is uh, the diversity at the academy? They, um, it, 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 it's really a, a great place with students from everywhere. Um, you know, um, you know, people that uh, you know look just like our student body, and um, and and that's great, and that's what they're af after. And uh, when I went down there, <clears throat> I um, I checked in, and um, the person in charge in the admissions office says, "Oh, we have someone that wants to see you." I'm like, "Who?" Oh, she's a she's a graduate of Brockton High School. I'm like, oh, okay, good. So, um, this person hopefully will be coming with um, with the lieutenant in charge, uh, hopefully for a visit. Um, <clears throat> she gr uh, graduated from here, but her mom lives in Randolph, um, and and she's now down at the academy uh, working as a civilian in the admissions office uh, and teaching um, STEM courses as well. But um, no, it's just it was an impressive visit, and the opportunities for our students, uh, for the right student, um, is impressive, both male and female, definitely. Um, but um, the the athletic piece to this puzzle is huge because you have to you have to go th you know you have to be able to get through that you know be smart but also be uh, have the physical endurance. Um, it's it's not it's not a a, a, a program for the faint of heart I can tell you that you know so so thank you that was that was that was, it was very impressive and it, I, I, I hope we have students that take advantage because yeah. it's just a wonderful opportunity mr. Bath can I just add something to that I mean <clears throat> I think what you did is great I think having the Naval Academy here is absolutely fabulous because we've had great success with West Point We've had nine of our uh, former students graduate from West Point, and we've also had about 15 of our students graduate from Norwich, all serving line offices today and then other colleges around. But I think this gives us, gives our students more choice. And so I think because with, with Norwich and with West Point, it's Army, and, with, and there's been a few students who have gone to Virginia Military Academy, but it's also Army, so this gives a little extra uh, choice than maybe, Tom, in two years you go out to uh, Colorado Springs and you go to the Air Force Academy, and then we have all three academies coming here to recruit our students, which is not a bad thing. Congratulations. I think what you did was marvelous. Well, and I just want to say it was not at the expense of the Brockton Public Schools or the city of Brockton. I was the guest of the Naval Academy, so I guess all of our federal income tax paid for it but yeah, um, nice. not, not our local taxes so but uh, yeah it, it was a great it was a great eye-opener I'll tell you I mean I'd be remiss not to welcome mr. Bath back I don't know if I did that well that was the last thing we to do so mr. Bath and on behalf of myself um, I want to welcome you back and when I first started uh, when I left Broughton High to take a job at Central you were on the school committee then you've always been very supportive of the schools obviously with your you know, um, your own children going through the schools who I worked with when I was at Brockton High. Um, so we want to welcome you back, and we really appreciate you uh, giving your time to um, to f 
fulfill the role of the Ward 2 representative for the rest of the term. And uh, I know it's a lot of work, but again, it's, um, we appreciate you stepping up and, and, and doing this. So we we'll welcome you back. Well, thank you. And I wanted to formally thank all the members of the school committee for your support. Uh, and I, I know I wasn't able to attend the meeting because I had a medical emergency. And so, um, but I just wanted to thank everybody for your, your support here. And I look forward to working with you guys for the next four and a half uh, months, as it were. And whatever ex expertise I have or whatever we could do to, to help out. But I've always uh, had Brockton school system close to my heart. I've been working with the school system since 1990. So, uh, and I continue to work even after this is all over. But thank you from the bottom of my heart to all members of this uh, incredible body. Thank you so much for uh, your support and allowing me to serve with you for the next um, school year. Thank you. Well, you've always been a great friend of the Brockton Public Schools. You've always stepped up um, to support our students, especially with all of the fights that we've had in terms of you know, funding and, and charter schools. You've been right there toe-to-toe -to -toe speaking on several occasions. Um, you know, your expertise in education, uh, you know, Professor Bath, uh, is something that we certainly value. Um, don't think this is a free ride for you. We, we wanted you because... We, we, we have to tap into that educational mind of yours. You know, this is all about our students and what you can help and, and so we can provide for them. So I no have free some rides thoughts. there, uh, Mr. Bath. I have some thoughts now that I'm fully retired. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Anyone else? No? Okay. Um, okay, now, we're, uh, we're not done this evening. Uh, no new, that's the end of new business. Uh, we do have executive session tonight. There is a um, level 3A uh, report and grievance. So we will need to go into executive session. Uh, I would just uh, uh, state for the public, I believe that once we adjourn from executive session, um, we will then adjourn the school committee meeting. I don't believe that anything else is gonna be taking place after that session. So. Um, understand that you are free to stick around and just watch us uh, end the um, school committee meeting, um, but uh, there'll be nothing further discussed in public, so I would recommend that you go home and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Um, so in order for us to go into executive session, we need to have a roll call vote. I have a chart, I believe, somewhere. Everything gets sucked up into my paperwork. There we go. Okay. So. Mr. Minicello, yes. Ms. Azak. Yes. Mr. Bath. Mr. Diagostino. Yes. Mr. Gormley. Yes. Ms. Sullivan. Yes. And Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Okay, so we shall go into executive session. We will, uh, when we come out, we will just be ending the school committee meeting. So um, we'll give people a few minutes to uh, vacate. And uh, then we will start the business of executive session. Are we doing it here or are we doing it in the, uh, one of the smaller rooms? System off, yeah. Okay, great. So we'll take a five minute recess so that we can uh, adjust things and uh, end taping.